I think the value of the rigor of our testing is that it gives our customers something that they can trust in. When we see a piece of equipment that's actually out on a job site someplace, and if it's one that you've worked on, you know you've touched that machine. You know that you've contributed to making that the best machine possible. The one issue that we wanted to avoid is inconsistency of material. So we built this loaf, as they call it, inside of our facility here, and we built it in layers. So it was extremely consistent all the way through. When we run a study like this, we want to make sure that we're doing something that is representative of what our customers do in the real world. Today we ran a short load and carry cycle, which was roughly 100 meters of travel with a loaded bucket, and that's to represent what a customer would do in an asphalt plant. We also did a truck loading cycle, which is very common in quarries when they're loading out of the face uh, in the trucks that they'll haul to a crusher. We have to make sure that all of the machines are properly prepared, that the configuration between the machines is an apples to apples comparison and that everything that we do can be compared without having any air. What machine configuration has to be, um, we'll then schedule shop time to make modifications to the machine as needed, install instrumentation, work to get the operators, the facility, all prepared in order to make a test go as planned. We had looked at typical applications for these two machines in the field, that being hard bank loading, loading trucks, and short load and carry. Based on the material density and the material we're moving here, we size the counterweight and the buckets accordingly, along with the tires and tire pressure settings for these type of applications. Primarily the engineers sitting inside are collecting data on time. They're measuring how long it takes to go through each of the cycles. So to load the, the bucket, to dump the bucket, to carry the bucket to the truck, they measure that information. The other engineers who are measuring all the fuel information, getting the data off the machine, they're the test engineers and they're pulling all the electronic data off the machine so they can decipher and analyze the data and make sense of it. So we take the time, and then we have the third person who has the payloads. They take the payloads, the time, and the fuel, and they put it all together to tell you how efficient the job is, how that machine is. When I'm sitting in my truck, I'm monitoring his cycle times uh, to make sure that he's being consistent and we can have him speed up or slow down as needed. Um, in addition to me manually recording each element of that cycle with my computer, we're recording a ton of data on the machine and when the test is over, I'll go back and go through that. And you know, based on the channels we have, I can say, okay, here he was digging, here he was traveling, here he dumped, so on and so forth. And we'll cross-check those to make sure that there's alignment between what I was taking with the computer and what's being measured on the machine. So when we install scales like these that you see over my shoulder, one of the things that we do is a scale repeatability study. We took a machine and ran it over those scales 30 times so that we can measure the repeatability of the scales. The reason that's important to do is that gives us information that gives us confidence in the numbers we're providing to our customers. Fuel measurement is very difficult. When we develop our engines in the lab, they measure that fuel for every engine speed and load point. They'll try to develop a map that shows, here's how much fuel you're burning. And that's what our ECMs report by measuring with a cap burn rate meter, it's a positive displacement flow meter, and looking for consistency between the two, you know, it gives us confidence that our ECM is right. It also helps give us confidence that the burn rate meters are right. All the work that we're doing today is to basically make our numbers as credible as possible. We will do various runs to validate those numbers under different conditions, under stationary testing so we understand what our, our, our fuel burn rate is. It helps them be successful because they can make a better choice as to what machine they need to purchase. We're double checking, cross checking, making sure that what it says it burned, it actually did burn. What I'm really after is this machine moves this much material and burns this much fuel. That's the data that we need to produce to our customers and dealers so they know when this cat product shows up, this is the production I'm going to get, and this is my fuel cost that it's going to take to get that type of production. We have to measure accurately so that we can 
you know, give results to our customers that we have confidence in and that they can have confidence in. We want to make sure that we have the right machine at the right time, at the right place, in the right application for our customers to win. Seeing that particular component or that particular machine go into production, we can honestly tell the customer we have validated this machine beyond its expectations. When I've had a really good day is when I come to PPG. My operators are running consistent cycles, they're getting good payload, and my machine is outperforming the competitor. Whether the fuel prices are high or low, it's something that the customers are always conscious about. You know, everybody makes a wheel loader, everybody makes a truck, everybody makes an excavator. But to get your product to stand out in both fuel consumption and more importantly, fuel efficiency, that's really where Caterpillar shines.